The eruption is on. Once triggered, the eruption continues until one of two things occurs. If a geyser first uses up its heat, it simply stops, as seen here with anemone geyser. Remaining water drains back into the system to be heated again. If a geyser first runs out of water while enough heat remains to still cause boiling, it'll have a steam phase. Though the basic principle behind every eruption is the same, each has its own unique characteristics. The amount of time between eruptions, or its interval, is dependent upon a number of factors. In 1938, Ranger naturalist Harry Woodward made an important discovery. He found that there was a relationship between the duration, or how long an eruption lasts, and the length of time between eruptions of Old Faithful. A short duration means less water and heat has been discharged, and a shorter interval will occur. If the duration is long, then more time will be required for the geyser to recharge itself. Another factor that determines a geyser's predictability is known as exchange of function. Almost all geysers are associated with others in closely related groups through plumbing systems that are interconnected. It is this sharing of plumbing systems that makes many of the geysers difficult, if not impossible, to predict. An eruption of one member of a group can have a profound effect on others, stealing needed heat or water. Grotto geyser is closely related with at least six others. Grotto's present frequency has also acted as a pressure release to giant geyser, rendering it inactive. Prior to an eruption of Grotto, a closely related geyser known as North Grotto Fountain may erupt. In the foreground is Spa Geyser, another member of the Grotto Geyser complex. Its pool will fill during an eruption of Grotto, and sudden bursts of water are common. Larger eruptions of Spa have been known to visibly weaken Grotto. Still, other geysers can be used as an indicator for the prediction of another. This small spouter is known as Beehive Indicator. People are fascinated with its tiny eruptions, unaware that it's often a prelude to a much larger eruption from the cone to the left. Within 20 minutes of the indicator, a full eruption of beehive may begin. Visitors are often caught off guard by beehives' infrequent outbursts. Some indicators are more subtle than beehives. One and a half to two hours before an eruption, Riverside Geyser's pool will begin to gently overflow, spilling into the Firehole River. Riverside is one of the most regular geysers in Yellowstone, with an average interval of around seven hours. A column of water arches over the Firehole River at heights of 75 feet. who knew him best. Hey. If any geyser in the upper basin is worth waiting for, it is Grand. Grand is a fountain-type geyser and is the largest predictable geyser in the world. Grand begins with a long series of powerful bursts that can last several minutes. During this opening performance, explosive bursts can reach heights of 150 feet. But the best is yet to come. And suddenly the eruption stops. The column of water again begins to rise. This and any succeeding bursts may reach heights of 200 feet or more. For visitors that witness these incredible eruptions, it's an experience they'll not soon forget.
Nearby Sawmill is related to Grand and is also a fountain geyser, erupting from a pool of water and characterized by the splashing action of its eruptions. Lion, on the other hand, is a cone-type geyser. Cone types erupt from a small opening that acts much like a nozzle. During an active period, Lion erupts every one to three hours with a majestic plume. Castle's huge geyserite cone suggests that it's very old, requiring thousands of years to build a 17-foot-high cone. Castle's eruption pattern has changed considerably over the years and currently erupts every 10 to 12 hours. Geyser has also undergone changes over the years. Plume was created in 1922 when a small steam explosion created its surface vent. In December of 1972, another steam explosion opened a new, larger vent. Eruptions occur about every half hour and are in a series of four to five bursts reaching heights of 35 feet. Daisy's eruptions typically occur every 85 to 110 minutes. Its eruptions and intervals are often affected by cooling winds or strong weather fronts. Visitors are mesmerized by his angled plume. The abundance of extraordinary geysers in the upper geyser basin sets it apart from any other place on Earth. Better than 25% of the world's geysers are found within this area of one square mile. These are but a few of the over 100 geysers of the upper basin. There are also hundreds of bubbling and boiling hot springs along the trails. Morning Glory Pool is a beautiful sight, but it's a tragic scene as well. Some visitors, unaware of how fragile these natural wonders are, throw coins, trash, and other objects into the pools, choking off part of the flow of hot water. This has cooled the water temperature, allowing bacteria and algae to grow. Though still beautiful, we've been deprived of its true beauty by the thoughtless acts of others. Beautiful terraces of mammoth hot springs are quite different from the features of the geyser basins. Water doesn't erupt here, it flows, gently from cracks in the surface, forming huge travertine terraces. Travertine is dissolved from the limestone and deposited at a much faster rate than the silica found elsewhere in the park. These waters carry nearly two tons of dissolved minerals to the surface each day. The source of this water comes from rain and snow falling high on the Yellowstone Plateau in Gallatin Mountains. Rainwater seeps into the underlying rocks. Rising hot gases mix with the water to form an acidic solution that dissolves the underlying limestone. The lime-saturated water continues to seep along rock layers, 
until it reaches the surface where it loses carbon dioxide, reducing its acid level. Thank you.